Believe it or not, I was really nervous about quitting my full-time job. I had so much anxiety around it because all I've known is how to work. But I learned after seeing so many friends and family be laid off during the pandemic that no job is safe. May 31st, 2021 was my last day of full-time employment. That was my last paycheck. Growing up, I watched family members use their hands to do jobs. So cleaning jobs, janitorial, nanny jobs. There was no job below my family. And I learned a lot from them because that taught me that you do what you have to do to take care of your family. But I also knew that I really wanted better. My mother dropped out of high school at 17. My father did graduate high school and he went off to the Marines to try to make a better life for us. I learned that I really wanted to make them proud and go to college and live the American dream or what I thought was the American dream. I initially decided that I wanted to retire at 45 years old. I think that's a goal that a lot of us have. I want to retire at 40 or I want to retire at 50. And so I started on this path to fire because my investments grew and I realized that times were just getting harder at work. Being a professor was a very stressful time during the pandemic. Everything moved online. The expectations for being a perfect online teacher were at a max. Students had needs. I was homeschooling my children. There was just so much stress and it just became a really tough situation. And I looked at my investments even during a pandemic and I realized how much they had grown. And when I started to think about how I was spending my time and the stress that I was under, I decided that, wow, you know what? I can actually go ahead and lean fire and stop working full time earlier than I had expected with a little bit less money than I expected and I could still fire. When I fired in May of 2021, I had accumulated $850,000 in investments. And I determined that that was enough based on the fire calculation of having 25 times what you need to live on. So even though that was lower, that 850K was lower than my number, I knew that I could still do speaking engagements, I'll still sell my book, I could do these side hustles, I have an Etsy shop, right? So I have other ways of creating income so that I knew I didn't need to have my full nest egg of a million dollars to live. So 850K has been fine and my investments have continued to grow even though I haven't contributed any more money since I early retired. My investments have grown to over $900,000. Over 50% of my investment portfolio is the S&P 500 index fund. It doesn't get any better than that. It's well diversified. It's 500 of the companies we all know and love. You can recognize them by name and they have really been good to my portfolio. Then I would say another about 25% of my portfolio is the total stock market index. So if the stock market overall is up, then my portfolio is up. And then probably another, the other 25% of my portfolio has a mix of bonds, some REITs, and some individual stocks in companies like Apple and Amazon. A typical day for me starts out with, of course, getting up around 6.30 to get the kids ready for school. So I get up, make their breakfast, wake them up, get them ready. I like to sit with them while they have their breakfast so we can just have that moment to talk and they have different schedules so I can spend time with each one before they get off to school. And then I'm able to have my tea and have a moment to think, reflect, plan my day. So I'll go to the gym, I'll come back home, make a light breakfast, and then I'll start working on whatever's important to me. Typically, that will be maybe someone has reached out to me that has questions about their budget or I have mentees who are starting new jobs right now and they're asking me about their 401k and how how much should they invest in it and what is it what else do I do in a day I don't know the day believe it or not the days go fast when you're fired
I live a downsized life. I really honestly do. I live in a comfortable neighborhood in a town home that's three bedrooms. It's just what we need and not a whole lot more, but we're happy here. And I do have some things that are really special to me and that are important to have. So I'm not saying never buy another purse, never buy another pair of shoes. I don't think that's life, that's not realistic, but your whole wardrobe, just kind of look at it and say, how much of this do I really need? Does this really bring me value? Could I be investing this money in something that's gonna bring me a return? And so that's kind of how I look at it. When I was on my fire journey and I was cutting out, I, I literally went through my budget line by line and every single thing that I had, I removed it. So if I had a subscription to Audible, got rid of it. And I went to the library instead rent audiobooks from the library like everything in that budget i said where can i find a substitute for this how can i either get it for free or drastically reduce the price of it or the cost of it and the thing about fire is that you just want to spend time doing the things that are meaningful to you i no longer have a boss but I still do things that are important to me. So I think that's the important concept is that fire gives you choices. Fire gives you opportunities. So I don't want anyone to think that, oh, you fire and then you just ride off into the sunset and no one ever hears from you again and you just never do anything again. No, now I'm actually living my life more fully. When I think about what's next for me, man, I, it's, there's just so many opportunities out there, but I wanna stay grounded. I wanna stay focused on my children, spending quality time with them because that's what they want. They don't ask for things. For Christmas, they ask for two or three things at max. They want time, they want experiences. And so that's really what's next for me, planning out my, <laughs> my travel schedule for 2022. And I'll just see where life takes me.